Welcome, welcome back to the Call of Duty League and our Monster Energy matchup to New York Subliners and the LA Thieves. I'm Shift with Study, and uh, well, it's been a weird day <laughs> for a lot of reasons today, Jeremy, but this is a matchup that I think has a lot of implications for both of our two teams. Oh yeah, more specifically, LAT. Like, they have been getting whooped in their last couple of matchups yesterday, but obviously versus Toronto Ultra, that's not the way you want to go on. I think the biggest yeah. backbone for these guys is their respawn game mode. You have to be able to perform versus some of these top teams in the respawn, and going up against New York is a great test at that. 100% the case, and again, that bottom four or five teams, especially with Minnesota locking in their first win, you know, who knows who's going to start in the bottom side of the bracket come Boston with how full some of those squads are. So a win could be massive. But turning things off for New York, Hydra already gets the opening cruise missile. First time on the hard point. Will largely also go the way of New York. And you look down towards the minimap here, Jay. They're already set up for P2. Yeah, this is a flawless start to this game if you are the subliners. You start off on the bad side. You're able to get a good chunk of time off of P1 and instantly already flip with Hydra earning himself a cruise missile. I was looking at on the side of LA Thieves. These sub income players have to be able to perform on this map because they've never played Skid Row. This is yeah. the first time that this roster has played this though. On a map that's so up close and personal, Joe DeCease and Afro have to be big time. Yeah, really bizarre map set overall. It's not just this opening Skid Row, but we have Skid Row for map number two as well, which is another map that the Thieves have yet to play here in the CDL. So very bizarre to kind of see the map selection go the way that it did as New York Wolf, once again, like you mentioned, set themselves up pretty much perfectly. A little attempt here from Thieves through tunnel side, but Skies is aware of it. Wants to try to track down Ghosty to make sure things are safe, but Sip will beat him to the punch, and that will be full time here for New York as LA already looking at rotation. A full 60 hold, and now the subliners are already on the better side of the map to win that rotation over towards next. At least Cammy does win a gunfight towards top middle, so it's going to be a 3v2 in favor of LA off this rotation. But subliners coming out swinging. Or oh, everybody watching the proper cuts. I do a huge one on one across the map. He's staying alive, just trying to cause problems over there towards the laundry side while his teammates eventually set up the pinches. Thieves just kind of hold down the back. members left alive, but like you mentioned, the swarm from the subliners so darn quick. It, it's not even just the SMGs, man. I, I've been really blown away with these guys has been able to do so far. Oh, yeah. Here. He's fifth currently in overall KD with a 1.16. He's top on his team, and it just looks like he's really moving differently in this year. And well, Kismet will make sure that he can make sure the same conversation points happen for himself. I mean, at this point, it's just an absolute runaway here from New York. The early break leads to a lot of time here on three. And you have to find the way to stop the bleeding now if you are LA. Are we going to decide to put this junk time? Because they know already a couple players from subliners are going to be off that rotation. A huge one-on-one -on -one win right there for Joe to see. So at least put himself in Barber, but then the trade is instantly there. Now you have Sibbles on a four streak. Final 15 at least goes to these way to try to keep themselves in this game. That's another rotation won by the subliners. Can Sib pick up his own cruisers of his own? Nope. The shot punch does not work, but subliners in full control. Yeah. Kisman already has a lot of damage put in towards those players' backside playground, so it's very easy for the rest of New York to follow up, find the kills, and we open up the backside of Barber once again in that bright shade of yellow, and there is just flat out, Jay, a tempo difference going on right now. Oh, yeah. I have to imagine the comps for LA, they probably feel like there's five members from New York on the map. They are all over the place. Yeah, every time they trade, there's always an extra player from the subliners in another position to find a two piece. And finally, they find two through the back end, but now you have to deal with Hydra, and they do just that. So the final 30 seconds should go in favor of LA, but now it's going to force the subliners off the rotation to another money hill over by the crates with the oh. cruise missile just in case it get a little scary. No, they're going to be okay. But we still have Sip contesting this. Even with the pistol, he's able to find three and find the break. Oh, my. V3 on the old time for Sim. The only thing that takes him out is a lingering trophy for his teammates, guys. And like you already called out, the AR is already set up, ready to go around this final hard point. And even though LA do have a little bit of mid-map presence to work with, it's being contested so quickly off the spawn from New York. I mean, they are all lying right now. Oh, yeah. And there is just nothing LA could do about it. Hard point will open up over towards five, and New York once again finds themselves in control. This is basically like the same game that we saw yesterday between Vegas and Optic. Uh, they were just ahead every yeah, single yeah. step of the game, finding breaks when they needed to with the team early off the rotation to properly set up every single time. So already at the P5 subline, all of LA spawning over towards ticket side. You have to win some insane gunfights, knock the player out of P2, and they do just that, find three kills at the right time to get the break.
Yeah, nice little setup here, though, on the break attempt here for Thieves. You've got Ghosty who can just stay safe in the hard point, and then a passive angle being watched by Afro. He'll take care of the first, no problem. Sip with the fourth can catch the bullet. Oh my goodness! The snap back over to Ghosty. No trades allowed. And New York will finesse their way right back in for the scrap time. We're going to be dealing with a 162 to 64 game of every final second gets earned. And over towards New, the problem continues to amass. Kismet trying to find the final double, but at least Thieves will have something to write home about as they will open up the apartments to their name. Yeah, this is how the Thieves get back into this game, though. You already won a couple gunfights in towards P1. You win this next set of gunfights, that's when you start to play for that rotation over towards P2, because now Sid has to get those positions. He can no longer play towards top two, rely on his teammates, and now that's leading to LA finding some much needed time. Not only an 80 point game, but as soon as I say that, Hydra makes it happen. He finds two, the trade is there, but at least for the subliners, they keep the better side of the map move for that P2. Oh, but Kismet just quickly takes the baton up and nearly gets himself all three. The follow up for the rest of New York is good, so once more, the scrap time gets broken. New York find themselves in control, and what looked to be a pretty solid start to the second rotation for LA has immediately been thrown aside. Cammy through mid-map does at least breed some kind of a setup over towards two, and the foot okay. race as well here for Thieves. Sky's able to step into this, and you gotta remember that there are a lot of tools available for subliners if they want cruise missiles to try to break this. They have a lot, and at least they have the bodies at the right time. Sid goes huge. He actually finds two in towards bodies. Stalls out of a lot of a time for his teammates to get back into the play. And even though they're not getting time, they are the team closer towards the point. And they are going to be the team that's going to be fully set up now with all of LA spawning over towards the second side, trying to apply the pressure through deep five, trying to apply the pressure through the garage. They just have to find a couple kills. And Ghosty might be able to start it off with that first. Player, that hardball does get taken down, so it will go neutral for the time being. Still a focus on the eliminations first and foremost. 28 seconds of time remaining, and now all of a sudden it looks like Sib will be the one who will commit his life to getting up top and earning some more time. 175 to 86, and the trends and patterns of this game have been leading this absolutely subliners yellow from start to finish. And look towards oh, yeah. H&J, and once again, three subliners already here ready to fight. They already have top mid control, so now it falls into the hands of Ghost and his teammate and Cammy. Cammy at least does a great job of finding that two piece to keep his team in control for now. They get the close back laundry spawns. Now you're forcing all of the subliners to hit the hop up, but they're not having any problems when it comes to these one on one gunfights. That's another two that go their way. They're already here, the pressure. New clearance though for Thieves, to reduce that pressure through mid map. Now it's all coming from the front. And Sid realizes that this is a problematic spot to be in. Does get pushed down, eventually taken down. So Thieves will get past the 100 point mark and a chance to even do a little bit more damage here. And as much as this game has been one-sided, you finalize this 30 seconds and win rotation, Thieves could make a show of this. Oh yeah, they're right back into this game if you can get this time. They're gonna be late off that rotation. We already have Kismet popping that dead silence, working his way in towards Barber while the rest of his teammates are still applying pressure in towards top mid. But this final 15, it's all LA. Now it's gonna be a 60 point game and Cammy's starting to turn it around. All you need to do is get Ghosty to start turning around, who's currently yeah. on a three streak. Because at this point, if they can just start picking up with their slaying, everyone's getting out slayed. The only one positive right now is Cammy. You gotta turn up in the slaying department. Here we go, three on three over towards the new time. Nate's coming out for both sides. Trophies are largely negating most of it. Kismet getting the opener, immediately countered back. The rest of New York still just waiting for the hit, but Thieves do a really nice job of just kind of holding the corner and letting New York kind of come to them. So the break attempt on this rotation, good for Thieves. 145 to 195. New York through the front window. Ghosty now on six. Trophy to reinforce it. Afro oh, oh, oh. picks up it. Hold on a second. We've got LA at 150 and a chance to even pinch up this next hit that New York is trying to hit from the front. They're going to be able to basically almost tie this game up. It's going to be 185 to 95 if they walk away with the remaining time. Now, the only thing is they have a cruise missile out of Ghosty who has turned this game around, who could potentially be the game changer to try to break this P5 hill. But subliners have a couple to work with as well. Still a prime pressure over towards Tunnel, but with only 15 seconds left, we did a good job of contesting as much as we can. Now it's time to put ourselves in the best setup to potentially close out this game. Looks like it's going to be a mad dash through mid-map. We've got Kismet already watching over through garage side. Joe Deceives looking for something, and it'll be an extra reinforcement of the cruise missile just to make sure that no one exits for free. Yeah, over towards this new hard point. Hard point open. Skies with the first one in, and New York just kind of set up, waiting to see where exactly this LA hit's going to come from. Coming through the garage side. Joe trying to do something over through Ticket. Both keeping a lot of the action safe, but Kismet gets a little bit anxious. Takes his first play forward. He's taken down. We go 3v3. Here comes the push and thieves. 
Here comes the push. They have to win a couple key gunfights, and they do just that. All out pressure through garage. All out pressure through ticket. They invest the crew towards the repositioning out of a couple players out of the subliners, and it eventually leads to the break. I thought this was a coffin dance when it started, but they have brought it all the way back. The battle between New York and LA is going to go down to the wire. We're going to get a 1v1 for the scrap time, which may seem a little insignificant, but this time is key for Thieves. Afro over the top with Sib. A little back and forth with the pistols out. Sib will once again finesse some of the scrap time. That will help New York get closer to the 220 mark. But over towards two, Thieves already pretty much set up inside the interior of the apartments, but they don't track down Kismet, who's been running and gunning. Kismet for two. Skies picks up the third. New York with the numbers, but Afro can still contest. Okay take out Afro and now you know exactly where they're all coming from that's the god steps let's throw our stuns let's throw our nades we've got to slow them down as much as we can and that's what Hydra's doing he said screw the nades I'm gonna do it with my gun that's already a three dead in the feed subline is trying to close it out this p1 but spawns all across all yep. around the map these have the pinches split situation here for thieves can they find the kills everyone's a little bit turned around though and George just keeps dancing oh, oh the room Oh my goodness, the subs lighten up the kill feed for New York. A chance to still win the game here. Afro the first one to make his way through jump window, but cut down by Hydra, who continues to run in circles around LA Thieves. Cammy the last one to stand, not going to find more than just a single kill, and it got close near the end, but New York's dominance early leads them to a map one win. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, man. <laughs> New York came on swinging. LA Thieves, they spawned in a little bit late, but they started the fight back. And that's the biggest thing that I was going to be worried about was where they were going to decide to just roll over and die in this map number one and move to the map number two. Because at that point, you're developing no consistency. You're not, not developing any fire underneath yeah. your chair to try to go into this map number two. But at least they showed the fight back at the end of that map number one. I feel like with the subliners, I don't know if it's just because it's the beginning of the game. A lot of their hard points are usually going down to the wire. They have not had any blowout victories yet. And at least they started off hot to close out that map number one. Yeah, absolutely the case. And on the other side for Thieves, that little bit of momentum near the end, I'm sure just breeds a little bit of extra confidence as we approach for a skid row search and destroy next. But before we get there, we're going to stop over to a quick break as it looks like the power in Columbus is starting to come back. So we're trying to get all systems go as we jump into the search and destroy coming up next.
Welcome back, everybody. We are just about ready to go, and we've got all engines running here. Map number two, still staying on Skid Row, which we kind of teased for a moment there, Study. It feels a bit bizarre that Thieves would find a way to kind of have back-to-back -back Skid Rows having not played it on either the hard point or the Surge. And I think to make matters worse, you're going up against a New York Subliners team that is perfect in Surge and Destroy to this point. Yeah, 6-0 in S&D so far in the season for the Subliners. That's been their backbone. They've got through game fives with it. That is where they rely on the walk away with the W and with them taking that map number one, they're already feeling confidence underneath there, but probably not as much because they sure. probably wanted to blow out, but they're still feeling good after that map number one. Now going into this map number two on Skid Row, you're playing a team who hasn't played it yet, and a lot of this map is all about aggression. Your SMGs need to be setting the tone, and already on in round number one, Subline is going to put all our pressure in towards Tunnel, but a big first blood comes in from Afro with that nade. Yeah, it slows things down through mid-map just a touch. Stuns to open the door here for Sky. He's trying to see what he can find over the top of the A site while Hydra watches his back. And in that process, there is an opening trade, a little bit of extra information off the nade. So we got 3v3 in New York can actually kind of set themselves up to approach this A site now. Yeah, they're just taking their time, though. They don't want to just push straight down the hallway. They want to see if anyone from the Thieves side decides to make a maneuver, potentially catch them, making a mistake as the time is starting to tick down. Sib potentially has some information. Someone's going to be playing towards top green, but he's just playing his timings, going back and forth. Subline is looking like they're going to commit towards that. Oh, big first and second from Afro trying to get away. Sib will get the trade, but damage has been dealt by the Thieves. Bomb still in hand, though, for Sib. Has Joe on the other side of the hallway, but there will be no challenge here. So 1v2 post plant, and he's going to go aggressively. This has been scouted. Sib absolutely overwhelmed at the moment, but oh, oh. for a second, Joe is just going to run right by him. Kill still comes through, and the Thieves will take the first round. See, that's the only difficult thing about pushing through tunnel because once you get trapped in towards barbershop, towards God steps, you are now forced to hit right up through that middle alley, right through top mid, and it walks right into Afro's pre-aim as he finds two, basically shuts down an entire play that the sublines are trying to develop. Once he finds those two kills, Sib eventually finds a trade, but gets the bomb down, goes with the info. I thought Joe seems going to slip right on by yeah. and make it a 1v1, but clutches up in the gunfight. Thieves take round one. See what the follow-up's going to be here. Again, not having seen LA on this map and looking at their search and destroy overall, it, it's been pretty solid for them. I mean, really only one bad loss, and that came way back in week number one. Everything else has been round 10 or round 11 affairs for them as they are going to go straight over towards mid with a little bit of extra support towards the actual jump up, but Hydra and Sib are all over it. Three for one, the exchange. Cammy last one left alive, and he has got absolutely nowhere to go. Yeah, that's just a complete blind counter right there for the LAT. Try to pull out pressure over towards top plat, but subline is just had two players through back alley with one towards top plat. So the team fires, the cross fires, everything was clicking right there for New York to win that defensive round in basically 10 seconds. Tied up at one. Real quick stuff. And the tempo for New York has been kind of a staple for them across all the search and destroys. I mean, they've played every single map in the pool. So there's definitely no fluidity issues when it comes to what they're prepping up for the search and destroy come Boston. And I, I think that just not only the fact that they're 6-0, but they've been able to win on every single map is super impressive for where we are in the early season. And here we go again. Three-man hit, though, this time, though, Jay, through Tunnel. Similar idea, but maybe an opportunity to wrap through Barber. That seems to be the case. Oh, they're going to be a lot faster this time. No first bloods coming by nades. Sib is going to be the island player. They're slowly trying to play for anyone going for a late pinch. But subliners have already covered a lot of ground. Into the back apartments they go. They should be able to get this bomb down for free. Yeah, Cammy's the only one who could really contest this, and he's playing a very passive angle now, stepping up, though. Oh, and he gets caught swapping weapons. Oh, the definition of bad caught timing right there. But no commitment from New York to plant as of yet. Looking to see if they can catch someone on a follow-up before they go for the objective. Yeah, at the same time, Afro was able to find that kill onto Sid, which is the Island player probably watching all the playground. So they want to make sure everything is safe before we get this bomb down. Now, Kismet is going to commit 3v3, 40 seconds. Two players from LA Thieves, though, working through the back alley. Hydra gets the info. Nate follows up and also tags. Hydra stepping forward a little bit forward. Kismet also going to join him, but they're stunned up. They don't Kismet's here, though. Oh, they've got no idea, but the problem was it was still a three-man hit for Thieves, and Kismet could only deal with the first. Now Disguise for the 1v2. Try to play deep through trash. As Afro nicely lined up. Ghosty tries to push forward into it. And no, sir. Not anyhow, not no way. LA Thieves pushed aside in New York. Take the 1v2. That's just a perfect post play setup right there. With Kismet, I would have liked to see him just commit towards the gunfight. He probably didn't get the info that all three players are through the back alley yeah. in the conga line. <laughs> but he at least gets one, sets up Skies with the perfect plant position to put himself in a position outside of playground, finds the first kill, and then just great shots on the ghost. He hit him over the trash can. 
to take the round right on back. New York secure an offense. Now back to the defensive side they go. See what these have drawn up here for their second attacking approach. Looks like they're going to make their way over through tunnel side. Little split hit through mid and that back side over towards God's stairs. Kids with the one in the way. Lots of information, but the stun doesn't get over the windowsill. So now he's got a forfeit to position, just nades himself backwards and we'll stay 4v4. But Siv eventually finds the first blood. Great teamwork right there out of Siv to assist Kismet in this situation. Puts them in a man advantage, but Joe Deceives might have just stuck on by. I don't know if he spots Kismet. Wow. He could potentially be a playmaker here. Smoke just makes a mess of that whole engagement over to the front side of the Kitchen. But Sim just stays right behind his own trophy system. Also kind of used that smoke to reposition. He comes away with two. Now the bomb is down. Afro has a look at Sim. Mutual information. Sim for <laughs> shot is perfect. Oh my goodness. It's three for Sim and New York go up 3-1. Yeah, I remember when this roster made a roster change at the beginning of the year after they won a world championship and everywhere I was like, why'd you guys drop Priesta? Why? Why? And it's not like Priesta was a bad player. It's just Sib, when he's playing like this, and I feel like ever since he's entered this New York lineup, he's just been a man on a mission. You even heard it in his interview. He said it's all about confidence. When he looks left to right, all of his teammates are confident in their own ability, so that makes him confident in his own ability as he finds an ace on the round watching the back of Kismet to shut down the round completely. Great work Unreal out of this Sib. Unreal stuff, man. Different look here for New York on their next offense. Not really playing over towards that back tunnel. This time it's more towards platform, but a bit more measured. Nades over the back. Kismet will get up towards scaffold and deeper. And Joe just doesn't have a chance. Did not expect it whatsoever. First blood good in New York in a 4v3. Yeah, Joe's definitely not expecting that. When you have two players pushing up the back alley, there's no way in hell they should let somebody go on the jump up. But the first blood goes to New York. Now, if you are Kismet, you're still in a great position. And then the Island player wins another one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. Skies now forcing it to a 2v4. It's time to pounce. Kismet finds the first. Now it's on oh. to the last. They give him three on the round. Subliners, 4-1 in the s &D. Yeah, they just can't do any wrong, man. And, and yeah. for what it's worth, that little push-up from Afro, I don't mind it. Like, you're in a 4v3. You're kind of stuck. You've got A pretty much completely opened up by New York. So Afro tries to make kind of a rogue play to see if he can catch New York off guard. But Skies is ready for it the whole way. And then Kismic pretty much bakes his cake and has it to eat as well with the stun that also lands at the end for the three. And it's just, man, it feels kind of like the hard point in a way where it's just it feels like LA are just completely outmatched, out-tempoed. Can someone step up? Maybe looking at Ghosty to do the same thing to try to get LA something to work with here. You just gotta get some teamwork because right now they're just getting picked apart one by one by one. New York are doing a great job of isolating them. And already into this attacking round for LA. They get shut down on an aggressive top plat push. Now subliners take full map control. You have everything literally cut off. Bottom mid, back alley, even tunnel side. If it gets a little scary, you have Kismet in a position to contest it. Yeah, at this timing, you just don't expect there to even be a play offensively through tunnel. It's just too many question marks and it's a yep. nade that opens things up for new york so now even more one dimensional comes this play for la skies on the cross double slide shell comes out sim over the top can't quite double down so the trade does favor thieves into a 2v2 hydra thinking about it wants it and why not you want to talk about just idolizing what confidence will look like in a play there it was right then and there new york cleaned things up up 5-1 he just kept on peppering him, man. All right, you gonna eat a shot here? All right, I'm gonna turn this corner. You eat another shot? All right, I'm sick and tired of you running. I'm just gonna commit with this Rava nine in hand, and he wins up close and personal. And when it turns into the 1v2 for Afro, Kismet just in the right position at the right time to play the trade, just in case his teammate drops to secure the round. And now subliners at game point. Nothing is working right now for LA. Let's just try no. to shut down this top plat push, or at least be more aggressive as a unit. Need something. Just sign of life would be good at this point. New York not even taking the bomb out of spawn. Quick aggression all across the map. Opening nades will have LA pretty much pinned up over towards that back mural alley. No one's even looking over towards the backside at Barber yet. A reposition will allow Thieves a chance to at least hold on to this B site a touch, but there's a lot of map given away here by LA. Yeah, a lot of map indeed. You already have Kismet towards bottom middle as well, so just in case anyone decides to wrap back through bottom middle all through playground, he should be able to get some info. The rest of his teammates are working through the top, and eventually Kismet strikes, takes down Afro. He's the guy that usually loves to play around his ace site. New York in a man advantage now. Stuns and nades will clear out at least the window room for now. Kismet following up behind it. Gets intel that there is a player nearby. They don't quite see Joe Deceives, and Cammy does at least go for 1-1, one, one, but no, he actually is able to assist Ghosty for another. 
Numbers still favoring New York at the end of the trade. Skies and Sib keep it into a 2v1. Cammy now by himself. Should have a freebie on Disguise, but doesn't quite work out. And then off the bottom, oh. pushing with Sib, but Cammy beats him to the punch with a pistol. Now to the 1v1. Reset comes through. Sky's the one needing to get the bomb and collect. Cammy's still holding close, checks the bomb, no one home. The reposition is scouted, but the clock favors Cammy on this reset. Now the 1v1, Skies beats him down low. And New York continue to stay flawless. Tally at the 10 total dating the last year. 7-0 thus far here in Modern Warfare 3. That was just too easy, Alan. From start to finish of the game, they just were the tone-setting team. All out aggressive through tunnel every single time, even on the defensive side. We're going to be aggressive through back alley to make sure you guys don't get top flat. And that's what it looks like when a team probably plays this map for the first time. It's not like they're not scrimming it on the back end, but when you're going up against a professional team in a pro match, oh, yeah, it's strategies yep. are coming out. Everything is going to make sure that we're doing everything right on our end to make sure we walk away with the W. And subliners made no mistakes. 6-1 in the score line multiple first bloods they yep. just absolutely dominated from start to finish man six one on the scoreboard six one in the first bloods afro the only one to really make a mark for la and map number two the least a little bit of good news here for la we've got invasion control coming up next it has been by far their most played control and yeah. i would say for a lot of teams they probably modeled their a attack off of what's been happening from la on this map so maybe there's a sign of life there jay it's got to be a sign of life because if you are LA, the only map that you've been able to win a majority of your series has been Invasion. Even it has to be Hardpoint, Search and Destroy, or even Control. Out of the five maps that they won, four of them have been Invasion. So they got to be feeling confident on this map at least. Uh, you would hope so. Need something to start coming through. Otherwise, New York will continue on what has been a very rampant day of quick sweeps all across the board. This is your monster energy matchup, but things looking, uh, well, a little less energized here for LA to the point. <laughs> See if they can find some life as we head to Invasion Control on the backside of the break.
Don't miss out on all the action at the first Call of Duty League Major, hosted by the Boston Breach. This January 25th to the 28th at the MGM Music Hall at Fenway in Boston. Scan the QR code on the screen or go to callofdutyleague.com for more info. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League pack. Grab yourself the CDL operator, weapon blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. What is up, friends, family, all you crazy COD fanatics? We're back with our Monster Energy matchup, which has been, like the rest of the day, very one-sided to this point. New York find themselves up 2-0, a very strong start in the hard point. At least Thieves are able to bring things back, and I think the good news here for Thieves fans is they're going to an invasion control. We kind of framed it up. They've been pretty solid here, and I would say that they are one of the early innovators to how you can approach the A zone on offense. You think that that would have to be another key for success for them again here, study? Oh, yeah, that definitely is the key, because at least on the opposite side for the subline is they've only played this map once that was all the way in week one of the cdl season and they went up against optic texas and they lost 3-1 with losing two defensive rounds so for quite some time new york were like yeah we're just not gonna mess with this map but we're not winning defenses there's no way in hell we're gonna walk away with the w but yeah. they decided to throw it in versus la who've been getting a lot of reps on this map so this is gonna be great practice for new york to potentially close it out in three and that's the big thing, you know, we've kind of heard, obviously, the, the desk talk about it quite a bit, but also other people in the community saying, like, hey, you know, if you've got hard vetoes going into a first major, you got to try to get some reps on them somewhere, somehow. Because oh, yeah. if you do find your way in the grand finals, especially for control, you may not be able to decide what the maps will look like. So it will be New York starting on the offense here on this map. And first blood will go over to Thieves with this opening aggression again, set up towards A, but ultimately comes out flat. Yeah, the sub line is trying to take the page out of LA's book. They're trying to get some early aggression over towards the A site, but LA Thieves are perfectly ready and set up for it. They shut that down. It's already 25 seconds wiped off of the game clock, forcing now the subliners to go over towards the B point. They're able to stop the time, but Joe Deceives working his way through DVD could potentially be the player to make something shake. A little bit of help though. Hydra snuck through over towards the top of P3. And he's going to find three kills on rotation here. He never stepped foot on the zone, so his position was completely unbeknownst to LA. Nice little wiggle through the archway allows Skies to get a little bit of help from Kismet to eventually convert another elimination. And that will be the second ticket progress already done at this B zone. 25.24. Thieves going to give this maybe one more good defensive hit, especially with that follow up from Afro. But do they get here in time? Sure do. That'll be enough to stop the third tick. No, oh, but now you have to take care of Hydra. Great shots from Ghosty to line him up through DVD. And now you put all of New York towards the back palace. But how long can you hold them in this setup? Joe deceives at least cutting down the right street. But Skies has already maneuvered his way in towards P1. He's going to try to at least stop the game clock by working up towards A. Or at least forcing a couple players from Thieves to scatter around. Oh, and he has the opportunity to just jump on and kind of get two zones going at once here. Trophy system at the ready. He'll use that to assist himself. Kismet will watch his cross. There's the extra 60 done over at the B zone. First elimination decent from Skies, but now he's got to follow up more and almost takes all three Thieves members down. Fortunately for the defense, they're able to get on before that first tick of progress is locked as well. Great work from LA to reinforce their way back in towards this A point. They also take down Hydra, so they maintain the map control for now. 16 to 15 in lives remaining. They already have Kismet in a great position, pushing his way up towards fire car, but he gets gunned down. And now if you are LA, you can start to be aggressive on the map. All the kills are going on your favor. You know exactly where they're spawning. Let's try to keep them at bay in the back of their base. 13 place, 12. Trades are good here from New York to at least keep a life advantage. Can they find a way to use these eliminations to move across the map? And once again, you've got Kismet nearly able to break through the LA Thieves line of defense. Does get caught. Cammy over towards the long street. Good angle here to help out. And that will be enough for Thieves to continue to hold on to the majority of the map. Oh, but the timer right there cannot come into play. Cammy actually turns around, lines it up onto Hydra to take him down. And then Ghosty is there for the trade. But this might potentially be the last opportunity for subliners to make a play towards the point, And both players get cut down. So now with only 35 seconds left, it takes about 15 to get across the map over towards A. This is potentially their last push in all of LA. They know exactly where they're coming from. Yeah, absolutely the case. Trophy systems have been softened up, some deleted. So nades from the Thieves looking pretty decent to, again, just kind of hold New York way out from this A zone. Nice gunfight fight win from Joe over through tank side. Looking for the trade is the rest of uh -oh. New York. They will find it. Keep your eye on the Kismet around the back. Yeah. He's actually snuck through again. And they got an opportunity to just walk on into the zone. Kismet may be thinking this is too good to be true. <laughs> and just kind of gets caught. 
looking for someone to shoot at. Kills will come through and the thieves will mitigate any further threat. But boy, I'll tell you, New York did have a last second look there for a moment. Yeah, they got a little bit of a chance right there at the very end. I thought if I was Kismet in that situation, you probably just want to get on towards the point. But once his teammate drops that first gunfight, we now have to play for a kill. Unfortunately, when he decides to go for the point, someone from LA lines him up while his teammates find two kills around the map. And it's just not enough time for the subliner to pause that game clock to keep the round going. LA hold strong on the defensive side to go up 1-0. Yeah, super crucial that LA were able to help out on that A zone before the first hit gets locked as well. That could be massive for round five implications. And as we kind of figured, thieves who have been kind of stapled towards this opening A offense will continue to try to keep hammering it home. Opening kill for Kismet, good as he follows into a second. And I mean, at this point, there's just nowhere to go here if you're Thieves. Opening offense doesn't find much success at all. Ghosty at least finds one fadeaway kill and it gets him onto the point. And then they a win. follow up onto Kismet. Hold on, New York, we're transitioning over. And now Thieves do have an opportunity to start getting some progress today. Yeah, it's a great win right there. Great read out of Ghosty to know that Kismet is going to try to apply the pressure on him. Unfortunately, he's not able to complete that first segment. So his teammates now have to apply the pressure over towards B. All of Subline is just making sure nothing fishy is happening at that A point. And now the game clock is paused. Thieves are just going to do the easy work. Let's try to get B done and dusted. Oh, nice little shoulder being thrown by Hydra. Alerts the rest of New York that Afro is trying to play through into DBD. But on the point itself, Ghosty does well to catch a first. That was Kismet on the pinch attempt. And then a follow-up for Sib playing a little bit safer on the deep side. Second ticket progress being worked on. Hydra, now it's time to go. And oh boy, he just does it all himself. First two kills are decent. Now Sky's off the long pinch. He'll mm. double down as well. Second tick does get locked, but New York have reclaimed the zone. And that is a perfect play right there, the Skies. He knew that his teammates did not pick up a single kill, so no one is going to spawn behind me and be able to re-pinch. He slowly works it when Hydra finds those two kills to find the final two and now put all of LA in the back of this spawn towards Palace. Time is continually dwindling down 35 seconds left they only have two segments oh. you have to try to complete b if you want to have defense just in case it goes to round number five but kismet is just cutting you all off now it's high just turn it's just so expensive for la every single life off the embassy spawn has guns looking right down at you 20 plays 11 15 seconds on the clock and la are completely stuck essentially behind that embassy wall Last attempt to try to make their way over towards B, get the extra 60 seconds. Sky's on seven. Just continuing to dominate as he's got help around him as well. And yeah, there's just no way LA gets to this zone. A couple of the kills will come through, but it matters not. New York hold them the two points of Targus, and that huge, leads to huge advantages now if we do get to that round five. Yeah, now if you are New York, you have set yourself up to walk away with the W. You also have a cruise missile earned out of Skies off the great play that he made off of that flank. So Subliners in full control now of this control game three. Back on the attack, they go. Do they try to go aggressively over towards A again, work a couple early segments? Because even when they were trying to, when that got shut down and they went towards B, B was a pretty easy capture for them. So if I'm New yeah. York, I'm going right back at it. Let's just call it, go try to get A. Seems to be the call here. Sky is taking the outside route, does have the cruise missile to assist if needed. Nade ceremoniously being exchanged on both sides. None weaker towards it, though. Finally, Kismet able to find an opportunity to open up the space in through mid, plus the follow-up from Hydra. Oh. But Joe, a key double. Stops not only the transition to A, but also the further threat. Hydra last one left, and oh. Afro does at least confirm a trade. Tested, but LA hold on. Yeah, but there's no one over towards the A street, so if you are Kismet, you're in a position to, again, force a couple players from LA to now split push off their spawn. We have to make sure we do not allow this guy to roam around red. Do not allow him to push around Mannequin. At least stop the game, game clock over towards this eight point, and they sniff him out at the right time. Three dead in the feed. Last layer up is going to be Sid. He has to try to find a couple kills to allow his teammates to get out of the base, but LA Thieves, they're holding strong. Yeah, New York just trying to stack the box here as they approach over towards B2 for one. The exchange, last one defensively nearby is Afro. Sid knows that Afro's nearby somewhere. Finally tracks him down, holds down the trigger, finds the kill. Now on rotation, Cami over through the cut, only able to take down one, and so New York will stop the clock at 22.8. LA coming off spawn, trying to find a way to reclaim. Trophy's down, two players stacked on the point. Just cannot allow LA to start off the gunfights on their favor. Ghosty starts off with the first. Now the contest is going to be here. Kismet trying to line him up. He at least takes down one, but LA walk away on top in those engagements. Now Hydra off spawn. He has to try to pause this game clock. Let's just try to get over A and make something happen. Wait, LA is not looking for him really at all. They know he's somewhere nearby. They just don't know exactly where. So that kill on the Joe allows Hydra to back up. 
Clock will stop at 5.7. Focus is still towards B. It's just Hydra being a nuisance on the A zone, and now LA are kind of caught looking both ways. They're gonna chalk over B and try to reclaim this A zone quickly, but Hydra is not giving them an inch. Finally, the kill comes through, but an extra 60 gets tallied, and in the process, New York has brought the life deficit just down to one. That's exactly what they needed to do, because if they didn't complete that B's point, LA Thieves would have been in a great position because they don't allow those three segments to get away from them, but New York are able to extend this time, and they at least have two more pushing. They're actually gonna invest the cruise missile. Whose cruise yeah. missile's coming out from the top? It's gonna be Skies, but unfortunately, two of his teammates drop, so he's only gonna be able to get info, but no map control to go with it. Can he follow up off of his own intel? No, not here. LA still hold on to mid-map. And now Ghosty on six in a row has earned himself a cruise missile, plus a little bit of extra forward presence for the rest of the defense of the Thieves to move in towards. But Kismet again. Late round heroics, possibly. He's worked his way all the way through, finds a second elimination. Now a 1v1 with Joe Pistol out, and that's good enough to confirm the trade. 12th play, six. Last attempt here from New York, and it's gonna largely have to be from the front. No time to make a long flank. Can they get Afro out of position? Yes, they can. Follow-up elimination over towards Ghosty what? is good. How do you allow that to happen? Joe needs to save the day and oh, he will. A 3K from Joe deceives, keeps Thieves again, at least going round for round, but boy, it's stressful. Man, Allen, these final 15 seconds of these rounds, I'm thinking they're gonna be locked up in LA. Damn. They are just giving up an opportunity. But Joe deceives instantly shuts it down. And let's see if you are the subliners, you walk away with those three seconds over towards B. So now you're in control of the game up by four going into this round number four. But the only thing that I was questioning was that investment of the cruise missile. So you probably want to yeah. save that for a later game or at least when your teammates are in a better position to at least win a gunfight. When two players drop as soon as you call it in, it's only info and nothing gained from that. So now LA on the attack. Back over towards the A point. They started off this time with the first block. Yeah, I love this. A little different split out here from Thieves. Sib getting taken down by his own uh -oh. volition actually allows a transition through mid-map for the Thieves to offensively move in towards A. Afro in the back line. They can just play all the way through over towards Gas Station, but Skies will get the trade. First tick does get locked here, though. Joe working on the second. Kismet nearby. First gunfight predicted. That could be the second tick, if not more here. Ghosty's holding the rotation. Ghosty for the double. And then stack it, young man. Get on in there. An extra 60 gets added with the rare A capture here for Thieves. And now if you are New York, you have to hold down this B point, not give up a segment. And that might not be the case. Already three dead in the feed. Subliners would really love that cruise missile in this situation, but they do not have it. They have a nade. Big nade from Kismet, great gunny from Hydra to at least start off with the initial two gunfights to try to get some map control because LA, they're just running all over them right now. Good follow-up eliminations come through as well. Now the Thieves here with numbers on towards the B zone. Nice little snap from Afro. New York scrambling, trying to work their way back over as the first tick of progress looks to be pretty sure. Afro zoning even further beyond the control point, and he's gonna still do well. Nice double out of Afro. Last attempt for New York to try to contest this would have to come by way of Skies, and he's stuck up top at the moment. There's just nowhere to go in Thieves with a quick transition over through mid to A, follow up with a clean follow in towards B. No worries, no problems. Thieves get themselves on the board. Man, that was a great round right there out of LA. You get a nade kill onto Sky. You even get Sid to kill himself with a with a blow up bomb over towards the left side of the map. And at that point, it's already three dead in defeat. The they had the double stack in towards A. They knew exactly where they where were the, where they were coming from towards Gas. You also had Afro working through back mannequin with that SMG up close and personal. They just really set the tone in that final attacking round. Before we went to break, I was really worried about Cami and Ghosty, but Ghosty is the man with the plan this map earns himself a cruise missile, multiple gunfights on the cross, won by him to secure his LA Thieves, this is why they play this map, because they're super confident on it, and they walk away with this one to stay alive in this series. And this is really cool to see how LA has kind of modified their A approach on offense in really each of the rounds we saw them try to play it, not only yesterday, but also here today. That, you know, that second offensive round where they kind of give you a head fake of, hey, look at us, we're throwing all of our nades through mid, we've got a player on B, and then all of a sudden it's kind of like this burst cue off of the kills to make the quick transition into A. It's just a really cool little flexible play that they've got and have really established as kind of one of their staples like we continue to talk about with this A offense for LA. And now that's another invasion added to the tally, Alan. <laughs> yeah, well, five, out right <laughs> five out of six maps. Five out of six. All Ws for LA have been on this map, but 
At least they now have the confidence going into the next map, but it's not going to be easy. They're going into a Karachi HP where they're playing against New York, who were 2-0 and on that map. And on the opposite side for the Thieves, they are currently 0-3. So yeah. one thing that they have to put their main focus on is their hold percentage. They are currently ninth on this map with three times played. So that means that they're rotating a lot of the time. But when they are set up properly, they're getting instantly broken. Versus a team like the Subliners, they have the Gunny, they have the SMGs, they even have the ARs who are going to apply the pressure to set up those princes properly to break your setup. So if you are LA, we can't have a slow start the way that we did in map number one. Gotta come and out fire. Yeah, and I think it's more than that, too. I, if you were to look back to the first two weeks of the season for New York, yeah, their hard point record wasn't necessarily in incredible. Sorry, for yeah. LA. But their map differential was only like 10 points. That means that their losses were super close. Their wins yeah. were also pretty close. But yesterday versus Toronto, they were absolutely obliterated. Oh, yeah. So you kind of follow that up with a map one today that you started off slow. Yeah, they eventually got it to a 250 to 193. But this New York team is not going to allow you to set tempo. I think that's no. the biggest thing about it and that's where i think the struggle lies in this karachi coming up for la yeah because you have to be able to be quick on the map just like the way you were on map number one skid row it's two totally different maps but the pacing on this map has to be set pretty high when you're rotating over towards p1 to go towards p2 you win that first set of gunfights you're going to be in the clear to get a full 60 hold because they're all jumping over the back alley or they're going to be first to early rotate it just has to be aggression 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 and crossfire setup a lot more teamwork in this map number four yeah, and I think the thing too here is, can you get a read on what New York is trying to do early rather than what we kind of saw in map number one, where it's like, wait a second, we're slow on this or we're slow yeah. on that. We need to find a way to kind of recover. You have to kind of set the tone early and make sure that New York can't get away with whatever they want. And I, I will say, I think a lot of the reason that New York has been able to be so fluid in the map is because they're getting such great participation out of their ARs. Oh, yeah. In particular, Skies has been super fluid when it comes to not just locking down certain lanes, but I think he's taken a lot of inspiration towards hey, I can step forward if my SMGs are going to be running as quickly as they currently do. Yeah, he knows what they like. Like, it's not, this is not his first rodeo playing with Hydra and Kismet. They literally won a world championship together. So he knows exactly what he's going to get out of his SMG duo. And with the way that he's been playing so far in this game, dominant, dominant AR. And then when you have those three players alongside Sib, who's been Mr. Consistent for this team, I feel like every time an opportunity for New York looks like it's going to slip away, Sib makes it happen. So this whole team is just... It's just a gauntlet, man. These guys are final form, and it's only month number one. Like, these guys feel good, man. Yeah, they really do. And I think the only real maybe concern, if you want to call it that, like when we were setting up this narrative, it's like, where are the vulnerabilities for New York? It's hard to pick one. Yeah. But you do look at their respawn to kind of be, okay, there may be opportunities, especially with this map set early to where a team like LA may be able to kind of sneak one away from New York. But like you mentioned, going to Karachi, not exactly the same premise of trying to step into a skid row. I, I think on the other side, just to kind of speak to the coin of LA Thieves, you know, Afro's been good for this team all year long. We've had a couple of slow starts from certain members, but I think this is kind of at the moment in time where we need to start talking that Cami needs to start participating oh, yeah. if this Thieves team wants to elevate beyond this the one current map series one that they have. Because Ghosty, you know what you're going to get out of Ghosty. Like, Ghosty's going to give you 20 and 20, leading in the comms, making sure everything is going the way it needs to. But Cami is basically like the leader. He's the veteran guy on this roster. So you're looking at this guy to just step up on his performance because then it'll all be playing good. He's like sitting at around a point eight in every single game mode. That's not what yeah, you want yeah. out of your your flex player you have to be able to step up especially when you're playing against some of these top teams that you know that they are their ar is going to be on the map and you have to win those gunfights versus them to be the game changer Big time. Uh, and just to speak to it, it's a 0.85 overall going into this se the series rather yeah. for the side of Cami, but a league worst 0 0.80 in hard point, which like you already kind of alluded towards, it just has to be better. So yeah. I think that's kind of what we're looking at here is can this LA Thieves fi find a little bit more of a mojo from this Cami player and hopefully get them into the mix because there could be a possibility of them finding themselves towards a map five if all four players show up and load in here to Karachi. See how things go. New York been looking real solid here though so tough prospects trying to set up that ask for la and try to battle into a map five i think we got a little quick reset right quick, right back to us it's okay we get to talk a little bit more about this game let me ask you a question alan out of both these two teams who's been the player so far on the season that has been like the guy that you weren't really expecting to go off but he's just been a man on a mission I think the biggest and easiest person to point to between these eight is looking at Sip. You know, new guy into the world champs, 
does it elevate the team? You know, when there's a lot of other squads around you that are making small moves to try to improve their stock, you know, kind of comparing yourself to like an Atlanta who, you know, made the substitution of Draza in the mix and he's been yeah. electric for Atlanta. Does Sib bring more to the table than what you were getting previously out of Priesta? And it's hard to really compare. I mean, I think they're both incredible players, but yeah. I think you're looking at this and you're saying, oh yeah, okay, Sib is definitely elevating this team to a new level. And I think it's all about the tempo and the pace that you're seeing here in the mix with Skies as compared to last year's roster. So I, I think that's the easy call is to look at Sib first and foremost and say that he has been incredible, not just individually, but he's also helped this New York team keep themselves at the top of the leaderboard. And the crazy thing is, I completely agree with you. Because when you're a player that joins the new team, like when you're a player that joins a world championship team, yeah. when you're that first, when you get in those first couple of practice and you're expecting them to be dominant at respawn. But the fact that they are dominant in search and destroy with the new roster, with, with respawn being their only weak point at this, you best believe they're only gonna get better at that mode. The fact that yeah. they're starting off flawless in S and D, this team is already in a prime form, in my opinion, to win a championship. Yeah, I agree. And then the other side for Thieves, I, I think you kind of have to look to players like Joe Deceives. I, I think that last year's LAG team really wasn't a fair way to evaluate really anyone on that roster yeah. just because of the circumstances that they kind of came through. Three members from the Academy team early get bumped up. But, you know, this was a year that I was thinking, okay, this is kind of a make or break. If Joe ended up coming into the Steve squad and he dominates to the level that we kind of expected him to when he was on the LAG Academy team, then he instantly becomes a staple in the CDL. And even though the team hasn't been particularly great to this point, there have been really great moments out of Joe Deceives. Oh yeah, Joe Deceives, been, he's been that guy with the SMG in hand. You sometimes get a little bit of inconsistency out of Afro, Ghosty and Cami, they're either hot or they're not, but Joe Deceives has been the only shining light so far for this LA Thieves roster when it comes to just what he does on the map smg in hand ar in the hand it does not matter he's gonna put himself in a great position to walk away with a couple gunfights and be a game changer for this la these roster so on a map like karachi where his impact is definitely gonna be felt in those positions like red in those positions towards fountain he needs to make sure he's winning those up close and personal gunfights yeah, and you look back to the play of the game from the control, all of those talking points really come to life for us. And, and I think individually, there have been maybe some questions about what we were gonna get from LA, but when you've got the ability for certain individuals to take over in key moments, these are all individual wins that come through. Afro starts things off, but then these wins from Joe, absolutely perfect. It's just, when they have the individuals starting to really shine and pop off like that, you can see the level of trust for LA goes astronomically higher than in moments like we saw at the beginning of Skid Row, for instance, where they're being out-rotated on. They're being out broke when it comes to how they're handling the hard point. But when the individuals start to kind of create opportunity, that's where I think we see where the premise and possibility of this Thieves team kind of comes to life. Yeah, and you can tell in this clip right here, it was both the playmakers. Afro getting up in towards the base, towards Gash, just being the aggressive SMG, just cutting them off off spawn. And then even when he dies and comes back to life, he's already up towards blue, being that aggressive SMG again, just cutting them off left to right. So yeah. if you can get these SMGs in those positions to succeed, you best believe they're going to do a good job at it. And I think on top of that, just to really kind of, again, beat the dead horse here, you can't rely on one person to be a snow no. in this league. You have to come out as all four ready to go. So our Monster Energy matchup has been extended to Karachi, map number four. It's been a muse of a playground here for the side of New York. They're 2-0 on it, including a couple of really key wins, in particular against Optic in the opening matchup, and then a tight 250 to 248 win over LAG in their second matchup. Whereas for the Thieves, they have been no strangers to it, but I think they're trying to shrug off the soreness that comes from Toronto's beatdown from yesterday. Yeah, 250 to 120 leaves a bad taste in your mouth. So we're gonna run it back and let's see how it turns out this time. You're gonna have LAT spawning on the better side, at least for this P1 time. This all starts about hitting your tags, backing them down, putting them in a position to succeed. And Joe Steves starts it off with a big nade, early time to Thieves. Cammy working for that top third position as well, knows that there's at least one subliner lurking over to the backside of Arkit, but loses track of him. So Hardpoint will once again be reclaimed by LA. Cammy up top now in a great position to ensure that continues to be the case. And this has been a great start for LA. Moves across the map now starting to come underway. And yeah, this is basically a flawless P1, and now you're forcing the subliner to basically chalk this one up, play over towards the cafe. And now there's only one player in a position, which is going to be Hydra. The rest of his teammates trying to rotate back through so the alley sib wins a huge one-on-one -on -one to at least potentially take top red control but a great way to start if you are la 45 uncontested seconds off p1 now we have to break in towards p2 
Absolutely the case. And I will say, just getting 46 seconds on the first hard point, it kind of softens up the potential blow of not finding a true break here at P2. But look at the spawns. LA is going to spawn over towards back alley side. New York not really in a position fully to get a read on this. And with Joe creating problems at Hotel, numbers are good here for the Thieves. New York scrambling to try to get themselves back into position, and the kills will eventually come through, allowing the subliners to hold. Yeah, and this is the perfect play so far from the subliners because you want to flip those spawns going in towards the next hill. As long as you're consistently holding red control, you're going to have a free rotation because you're forcing all of LA to just consistently jump over this dumpster. I don't know how many times we're going to do it. Let's see if we can win it. No, we can't. All right, now we're going to rotate to the right side. Chicken coop, but it's already going to be Kismet in a position. He actually doesn't find a kill. He might be able to drop it now. LA had the opportunity to hit that rotation. Cut across the map, though, from New York. Sid able to find two on rotation on four in a row. Joe gives him the fifth. Does he get a read for number six? No, not quite. Can't be able to neutralize, and it does soften up this rotation from New York, but full time had been earned on the previous hard point. So 48 plays 46. LA, final couple of the gunfights as we open up the hard point. Do look solid, but we're still fighting for spawns here as the hard point opens. Yeah, you're still fighting for spawns, and at least there's only one player right now from LA in a position to make something happen. It's Afro. He's just waiting for his teammates to get back into the play. Eventually, Sib does sniff him out, so... Just going to maneuver his way around here. Force LA to not have that point instantly because he knows that they're coming from Chicken Coop. He plays the cutoff. He finds one. Him and Kismet and Skies combined for three. And now New York are getting the time. Yeah, really good start once again from Sam. 11 and three. Hasn't seen a hard point yet, but doesn't need to if he's finding kills like that. Kismet up top just barely. Oh, beats Ghosty to the punch for a second. I thought there was going to be a little leap off Batman gunfight there for Ghosty to fire back. Not quite the case. It's actually Hydra's name that will confirm the trade over towards the interior in Fountain, and LA will overwhelm the only possessed member of Skies in the hard point. Siv also stunned. Oh, not dealt with though. Okay, thought he was dead to right. Not the case. Hard point opens, and we got a 2v2 for the time. And now he's one off of Cruise. So you have one player in Hydra working his way through top AC, trying to take top control. He does fall, and that's a clean four dead. Taking down Siv, shuts down that Cruise, and. Now you're in full control of the map. You know exactly where New York is spawning. Over towards the bridge side. You actually have one player in the sky who spawns towards red. So he's going to be the player off pinch. But it's all about holding for these first sets of gunfight. Joe Deceive starts it off. LA just bunkering in and around the hard point. Stud comes through. Joe pushing forward. Good decision. Takes down Hydra. So still, New York empty from kills. Trying to break into this fourth hill. And they may have to default and is rotating away from it. Really not much of an effort being concentrated through the front here. Just a couple of exit kills that come out. And LA is going to reap the reward of what was essentially 35 free seconds here from New York. It's just been blow for blow. Back and forth we had in this game. It was P2 to P3 for subliners. P1 and P4 so far for the Thieves. Great hold on both. Special leads to LA. Being up by about 30 points. But it's going to be subliners with more bodies on the right side of the map. Set up in towards Ticket. Ticket. Now, Cammy, he's on a force feed. He's starting to turn it around. Unfortunately, he does get shut down, and Kismet finds a second. So, New York, hold on for the first push. Spawns be on the right side of the map here for LA. So, the break from the front going to be largely contested by Sib, who is watching the cross, but he gets taken down. That opens up a bit of space. 3v3 for the hard point, though, as LA again to try to clear out this top hotel side. Skies, such a nuisance, eventually dealt with, but he's killed so much time off the clock, and LA have not yet been able to find a concentrated hit to try to break. They can't get in. They cannot get in. Subliner setup is just too strong, and they walk away with this final 25. They will put themselves up by 30. You already have players in a position towards top three. They're not going to allow P146 seconds to get away from them again. And it's already three dead in the feed. Can't be trying to go for the snap, but Kismet closes the door. He has manners, walks away with that gunfight, and now Subliners walk away with the final 15 and are fully set up for P1. Yeah, big momentum swinging hard point right there for the side of New York, especially considering that they also own rotation for the moment. Sib able to open things up as the hard point also makes itself available for time. Sky is over the top. No problems there. Ghost, he couldn't do anything. And Cammy barely able to follow up with any damage. 142, 103. Kismet making problems on the sandbag rotation for LA. And it's just, again, the cushion around the hard point. So comfortable for New York. Yeah, like if you were Hydra in this situation, like just kick your feet up. No one's getting close to you at the hill. Everyone is just getting gunned down. The Sky is able to find three in a row. Finally, Joe Deceives takes down Hydra, but for what? Subliners now win the rotation over towards next. Skies is now going to invest that cruise missile, so the information is now going to be gained where they are on the map. Subliners have just flipped the switch in the middle of this hard point to now take a commanding 60-point lead.
Have to force something on this rotation if you're LA. Three members off respawn, going right towards Kismet's direction. Take a fight over the heady, and that will be enough for LA to at least get some control over Diner. But Hydra quickly trying to follow up off this. Frag keeps one player at bay, and he takes the gunfight on the opposite, but LA still able to survive through this. Skies trying to find a way to break in, but they get pushed back. So we'll see how New York trying to formulate a break as we go to a subliners. Listen it. He's gonna go top mid. He's gonna go top mid. Oh, top, he's laying down mid alley. Top, top fire, one's mid alley. Top fire, weak. Duck, you A1 right now. A1, 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 last one. Last one, go A1 dead. He's weak, he's weak. Nice. Good one, good one. Good one, good one. I have a shield. Okay, good one. A1, go see. Watch out. Go see. Absolutely. I need A1. Watch out, please. Lay down left side. They're gonna be all A2s. A1, watch out by Nate. One's under me, market dead. I'm much right. A1. I'm much A1. I'm I'm going mid alley right now, Cammy. Mid alley, I have you. I have you. I have you. Can you look low? Can you look low? Can you look your bed? No, no, I'm top. Can you come top gen? I want some market. Market, market, market. I got stunned. Yep, out market and one guy's mid cut. Speak. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. He could go low. Yeah, I know. I know. But they're gonna flood in front. I have a mid. I have a cross. I have a cross. I don't have top three. I'm playing the barrel. They needed me. I'm needed. I'm. That's a little market. I need the right mid. I need the right mid, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, two mid, two mid, two mid. I'm watching. 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 I'm couldn't quite find the concentrated kills to get the break on towards two, but I'll tell you, the awareness and the movement over the round three has been good to this point for New York, but LA, they're giving themselves a fighting chance here. A late break over towards this cafe allows them a chance to still be in this game. Yeah, they're definitely still in this game. I wasn't expecting them to walk away with those final 25 seconds, but a great break comes in from LA to not let this game get out of hand, but it's going to be subliners fully invested off the rotation. Hydra in a great position, bottom ATM, but he loses that gunfight, and Kismet loses another. So it was just a great rotation for the subliners. LA Thieves, they find the break, and now they're the team inside. And this was the hard point that LA really started to get this game into some pretty contested spots over the top. Yes, yeah, guys, not quite able to find the shots under Ghosty. So once again, LA Thieves find their way in towards Fountain. Looking real solid for it at the moment as well as the only player on the back is Hydra. And the Thieves are aware of this. They eventually find the kills. Now the focus could go towards the front. Hard point stays open for now. And with that, I mean, this is this is a win here for New York. They don't get the full break, but you've at least kept Thieves off the time. Oh, you kept them off the time, but at least the Ghosty finding himself a cruise miss. So unfortunately, the team kills the only thing that can take him down. But LA with this final 20, they're going to be able to take the lead right on back. Can New York have the response like they did the first time around at Ticket with a great hold, not letting any LA players get even close to him? <laughs> and that's great shots right there to Sib with the SMG. He's up to 28 and 14, dub positive, but the game is really close. Like, come on. Yeah, it, it just comes down to can Afro find a way to get more involved? Just yeah. nine in 20 as we rotate to our last hill in the second rotation. Yep, that means he's averaging one kill a hard point. That will not be good enough, you would think. But LA, find a way to get this to a level ground. Nice tracking from Cammy to the oh. pistol. Almost finding Kismet. Trades still come through. Back and forth. Pinstripe kill feed. Joe Deceive trying to follow up, but he's got subliners waiting for his next move. And New York will find the first time here at five. And now 35 seconds left. LA, they are spawning towards the backside of Palace. You want to make sure you apply this pressure don't give up this time you know you're going over towards the p1 we just have to trade effectively and at least go see find that kill onto sib with the team kill to find the break and now you're going to force the subliners make to make a decision are we going to still apply pressure in towards ticket are we going to set up properly around p1 you already have two players over towards the bridge side one towards top three you have oh. two players also committing towards old subliners are doing both at the same time what a call. As soon as Hydra gets two over towards that top staircase oh. area, the two lurking members from Subliners break in for the scrap time. Cami at least allows an opportunity for the Thieves to rotate over through street. Joe looking for an opportunity to go further through market. This is going to take a lot of time, though. And New York is already on the hard point. They've even got cruise missiles to try to get this thing through the finish line. 235, 214, and New York all in control at the moment. Yeah, once that cruise missile gets invested, they have all the info that they need to know. Joe Deceives is going for a flank. Cool, let's turn around and put us up in a better position to win it. But it's only five seconds until they're able to call game. Everything is watched. New York are looking to close it out. Ghosty gets the first, a chance for him to jump on it, and maybe contest, but the kill comes through, and New York will survive through it. So, once again, another hard point where it looked like LA was about to be down and out. 
They give themselves a real good chance. I think in particular that rotation from two to three, the scrap time of the last 25 seconds kept them in the game longer than maybe we would have expected. But at the end of the day, this New York team just moving a little bit differently and Siv is just, oh my goodness. I, I mean, did it all himself for a couple of moments throughout that map, Jay. And he basically called a game right there at the very end because he had that cruise missile in his back pocket. If Joe Deceives hits that route without any information gained, he's probably able to make a play throughout a middle alley. But once that cruise gets invested, you now know exactly where every LAD's player is trying to attack from. We readjust our setup, we find the next set of kills, and they eventually call game. 22 non-traded kills out of save, but 32 and 17 just yep. really took over on this map number four. On the opposite side, we said that it couldn't be a slow start for one of the SMG on a map like